How's it going YouTube and welcome back to another Silica video today. We are going to be looking at the command console. Um, it was requested by a few of you that we just have a look at the command console. So you guys know how to use it. Um, how to like load up maps, how to go into your own sandbox. Just have a little play around and spawn in and slow time. All that sort of thing really. Um, I'm not a big expert on the command console. It is a like a developer tool in general. Um, to open this console though, you need to use a back tick. Uh, if you don't know what the key back tick is, it's literally the key directly underneath escape. And that opens and closes the console. Uh, just a quick disclaimer as well, guys, that um, not only that I don't know everything about the uh, about the console itself, um, it is an experimental feature for the host of a server. So if there are certain things happening within a game and you're online or on that game, um, easiest way to check if cheats are enabled is to press F. If you press F, you go into free cam mode. So that's the easiest way to check if this cheat's enabled. If you don't cheats in a server, then that's the easiest way to do it. Um, and also, uh, just as a disclaimer as well, that um, when you do use cheats in a server and you are the host, it activates it for everybody. So just be wary if you're trying to spawn in something. If, they, if uh, another player actually hits G or H and changes some of the overlays and is looking a bit confused and you've disabled cheats at that point, um, that player state will remain. So they'll still have that HUD off or these, uh, or like the damage uh, debug and the HP pools for units, etc, etc, and ESP and stuff like that active. Um, so you, when you use cheats in a online server, just be wary of that can happen. Um, right, okay, so without further ado, we're not going to go through all of it today, by the way. We're not going to go through, like, sun scale, moon scale. Um, I will quickly just read through it all, but I won't go into it. What I will go into is how to load a map, how to set a game mode, how to spawn units, and um, I would show you how to change time in-game, but um, I don't have a number pad, so um, I can't actually show you that. But I can show you how to slow time, because you can do that with your mouse. So... Let's get into it. So the only so you start off in the main menu. You don't have to start off here. Um, you can start off in a, in a server. You can start off in a solo game. Um, to be honest with you, you can do this anywhere. So you open the command menu using back tick. There we go. You type cheats. That activates the cheat commands. So now you've got access to the whole console. If you need help with it, just type help. And then it gives you a big old list. If you type map, for example, which is the third one from... Sorry, not the third one. The sixth one from the top. It brings up what maps you can pick. So you do you do that for everything. So you can set you know you can type in sunscale, and then it will say sunscale reset to one. So you can actually change the number of it, but be wary that you might might make yourself a bit blind if you start turning it up a little bit. So sunscale sets the brightness scale from the sun during the day. Moon scale sets the brightness scale of the moon during the night. Smooth commander turns smooth commander uh, movement on or off. Get get the game mode specific parameter returns at the current value. Set sets the game mode specific parameter. Map loads the input map with an optional game mode. Camera, copies current camera view to the clipboard. Destroy, destroys all unit structures in the map applying full damage. So you can wipe the map there if you want to just reset the round. However, it is quite buggy, unfortunately. Um, hopefully that gets fixed at some point. So you can actually just reset around. To be honest with you, you might not even have to use this. If someone has surrender, there might be a surrender button, which would automatically run the command for that uh, faction. Uh, delete deletes unit structures on the map. Valid inputs is like first unit or structure or all, and then current for unit or all for empty and all. Spawn. So you can spawn a prefab, but a camera's uh, position. Just to you know, go onto that. You just type spawn. It gives you a list of what you can spawn in. Uh, some of these don't work in certain maps. Other others will. Um, some of the old stuff is there as well, like the old harvester. Um, what else is there? That's like the troop, the unarmed troop transport. Uh, there's the armed one, but that's actually in the actual respawn screen. Um, there's an unarmed transport. There's like a fusion reactor and all that sort of thing there as well. So there are other things as well. You can also build, get the building sites working as well, but they don't actually build. It's kind of like a, uh, almost like a placeholder. Anyway, back to what we was doing. Uh, okay, so we was on spawn, right? Okay, so damage, turns damage on or off. So that's good if you just want to record units slugging it out with each other, like the AI units. You can turn the damage off and they'll just constantly shoot each other until they get bored. <laughs> Cheats. You want to know what that does. It turns it on and off. AI. Turns the AI on or off. So this doesn't turn off the commander AI. 
which I think it should, but it doesn't. So when you do this, it turns off all of the troop AI, and that also means for players as well. So if you're a player commando and you attempt to move a unit, they just won't move. The AI is turned off for that. So I just be wary using this. It doesn't. It, it has its uses, but it can also, um, yeah, th throw a human commander off. Fog turns the fog of war on and off. Build turns constructions, limitations, cost, and di distance to on or off. So you can build anywhere, and it costs literally nothing. Resources, add or remove resources to the current local team. So you can literally add money or take money away. FPS limits how many frames a render per second. Zero means no limit, which you can do in options anyway. Time scale sets the game time scale zero to one. So it just speeds up or slows down time. Health. Toggles display health for damageable objects, so you can actually do this by pressing H. So that's another way you can do it as well, with the, with the cheat commands on. Show damage debug. Displays debug information, damage projectiles, attacks, including positions and impact. Good for, like, if you want to look at ricochets and things like that. That's a very good thing to have on. Netlist. Toggles display in the network objects list. Exit. Exit to the main menu. And help. It just prints all command information. So... Like I said, guys, I'm not going to go through everything here. I'm just going to go through with the basic stuff that you might want to use yourself. And I'm going to show you how you do so as well. So I'm currently in 1080p. The reason I'm in 1080p because it's nice and big for you guys. So you can see what I'm doing. Uh, we're currently sat in the main menu. Uh, cheats are currently on. So we're going to type map. Say, for example, we want to go and have a look at the... I don't know. We want to go to Rift Basin. But we want to go to Rift Basin in a sandbox so we don't actually want a like a proper game we just want to have a fly around spawn some some stuff in and have fun so what we'll type in so we'll go map space rift basin now we want sandbox so you can see below the map following the game modes are currently available it says mp underscore deathmatch prospector sandbox siege and strategy so you press space you go mp underscore sandbox and that is literally the command you need to run. When I run that command, it starts loading. So it's loading the map itself, which is Rift Basin. And it's also loading the fact that it's going to be a sandbox game. So it shouldn't throw any units on the map. The map will just be a natural map with you in a free cam. So we'll have a look now. Turn off the command uh, console. So every time you load into a game, just be wary your cheats will be turned off automatically. So what you want to do now is type cheats in the command console. Toggles it to enable, and there we go. We are now flying around the map with nothing in it whatsoever. So this is Rift Basin. There's no commander. There is no humans. There are no aliens. There's no structures. It's just pure map. The Bolterium deposits are there. The biotics are there as well. So you you could you could create your own scenario. Um, however, the AI seems to be a bit funny because technically it's not a strategy game mode. So the commander AI isn't actually there technically. Right. So uh, when I activate cheats. There's a thing that came up at the top of the screen that says press backspace to show or hide the spawn menu. We're going to hit backspace. There you go. So it's come up with what we call a spawn menu. It's also showing the default team at the bottom here. So you can switch that between Alien, Centauri, and Soul. Fun fact, you can spawn in humans on the alien side. You can spawn in aliens on the human side. So if you want to have fun that way, you can spawn in crabs on Centauri and along with um, Centauri troopers, and they won't kill each other. So if I show you, so if I go Centauri... I'm going to spawn in, I don't know, a big group of riflemen. Hopefully they don't die from full damage. Okay, some of them are actually floating, but we'll ignore, we'll ignore that for now. <laughs> so, how I spawn this many at once, you hold shift and then you hit the key. So, hold shift and hit the key will actually spawn in those units. Now, we're still on Centauri. We're going to spawn in crabs. So, we're going to spawn in the same amount of crabs. And look at that. They're not slugging out with each other. So, you can, you know... You can create some fun scenarios, like if you want to make a Starship Trooper style, like style scenario, you can spawn in a ton of crabs, and then you can like start setting things up as well. Uh, the way to get them to attack an object is literally sh just by switching teams. So I've switched to Soul now, and if I, for example, spawn in Horn Crabs, this is where the game gets funky. Boom. There you go. They've started attacking each other. Looks like the crabs and the humans are all going at these horned crabs and they're just going to slug it out and we're going to let them slug it out a minute until we've got one victor which i assume will be centauri because of the rifleman um yeah so that is your spawn menu and you can do everything you can spawn in buildings you can even spawn in the lovely aircraft which will get shredded by these guys straight away looks like centauri did actually win um, so yeah that is how to use spawning um, another way you can also spawn as well is, like, for example, if it's not in the list here at the top, so, you, you know, you've got all current key structures, and there are some things like the armored transport, 
which um, isn't in the game technically as of yet, but it will be. Um, another one will be the Queen, which I believe is here somewhere. So the Outpost is another thing that's not in the game just yet. Um, that is the Outpost. Um, that will get killed by that uh, armed transport shortly. But that's a fully functional building. It has an interior and everything, and you can go up to the top through the elevator as such. So that is a you know a, a full-fledged building. Um, I do believe that will be a thing in the game in, in the short time. And again, like I said, another thing as well is the Queen, which is another unit which is able to be spawned in from the spawn menu. It is fully functional. It moves, it attacks, it does its thing, but it's not functional in the form of what it's meant to be doing in-game just as yet. And you can see it's currently trying to have a nice little slapping with the armed transport, and it did win. So that's enough of that spawn menu for now. Oh, and the Lee aircraft. That's another one as well. Right, okay, so... We're going to get rid of that. We're going to open up the command menu. We're going to type spawn. And now we've got a big list of what we can spawn. So, if I want to position myself so I can spawn a building, for example. Um, I'll tell you what. Let's, let's use the command key to spawn in. We'll spawn in the bunker 04. So, we're going to come out of the command menu. We're going to get ourselves literally kissing the sand surface. Literally kissing it. And we're going to say spawn. Spacebar. Bunker. And then we're going to go underscore zero one. There we go. Exit the command console. And we have ourselves a bunker. So place some bunkers down. This is a fully functional bunker. For example, if I spawn in a... Oh, I spawned in a HQ by mistake. <laughs> Never mind. Um, I was going to say, if I can if I can spawn in a trooper, I can capture it. Which you can do. Um, we're going to leave that HQ there. It's fine. Um, yeah, you, you get the idea. You can capture it. It's a fully functional bunker. So it's able to be captured, technically. Right. <laughs> I didn't mean to spawn in HQ. There you go. You see it live, guys. I, I make these as raw footage, so you see my mess-ups. Um, right, okay. So we're going to spawn another vehicle. Something that's not in the spawn console, but it is a usable vehicle. We're going to spawn in the retro hatchback. I spelt it wrong. That's fine. Spawn retro... There it is. So there's the retro hatchback. If you want to take control of a uh, of a vehicle from the free cam menu, uh, all you have to do is look at it and press F. You take control of said uh, you know said vehicle or trooper, and you can you know play with it. So we're we're playing with the uh, the retro hatchback. There you go. So we're playing with this bad boy. It is what it is. It's literally a car. It is a uh, yeah. That's what that is. And also, you could do it with the queen as well. So, if I want to take control of the queen, there you go. I've got control of the queen. You know what? I don't like this outpost. We're going to destroy this outpost. Okay, it might take longer than I realized. You know, and the outpost is on fire as well. It's actually showing visible flames. And outpost goes boom. There we go. Outpost is dead. So, I'll disappear now in a second. Same with the flyer. There you go. Take control of the flyer. The HQ is going to light me up, though, because technically I am on Sol, and that is a Centauri or Crab outpost. Centauri, that's what it is. Right. Okay, looks like a command's been issued to kill the retro hatchback. Um, so they're on, the, they're on the move to take down a retro hatchback, which is fine. It is what it is. Actually, no, they're coming off the... They're coming after the aircraft. I can't quite get to it, though, so it's fine. Right, so, now that we've explored that, um, another thing we can explore now is if I open up the spawn menu, I'm going to actually spawn in a, a rocket truck. Number five, rocket truck. There we go. So, we spawned in a rocket truck. The reason why I'm doing this is I'm going to show you something very, very interesting. So, like I said, I can't slow down or um, speed up time naturally with the number keys. That's how you'd use that. And same with, like, changing the daytime and such. Um, I don't have access to a number key at the moment. I use the 10-keyless keyboard. I am going to plan on getting myself one as well. But there is a way you can slow time for like special effects, uh, looking at uh, recoil patterns, uh, ricochet patterns off of tanks, etc., etc. Um, I'm going to fire a rocket. I'm going to show you what I mean. I've just held mouse button 4, which is going to be your lower side button. And that is slow down time. So I'm able to watch this rocket literally take its trajectory over to this alien queen. Now, if I let go, speeds up. If I hold it again, slows down. And boom. 
There you go. So the queen's been hit. Unfortunately, though, mouse three does not speed up time. Um, so I cannot speed up time, unfortunately, without using the command console to do so. But yeah, interest an interesting feature. Shooting a rocket at the aircraft. I mean, it is pretty much heat seeker, so it will go in a tag this aircraft, and you can just watch it. You know, take its mark. Is it going to miss? Just barely misses, which is quite cool. And it's going to land short over there. Right. So that is how you can have fun in the sandbox mode on the map there using the command console to load up a map, load up a sandbox, and you can just play around, you know, slow down time, have fun, and all that sort of thing as well. So that's it all of there. So you type spawn, you have a look through, you type in what you want, and it will spawn in. So hopefully that helps you guys with spawning in stuff. Now we haven't we're not quite finished just yet. We're gonna go help again. I'm going to have a look at everything else now. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to actually load up a strategy mode. The reason why I'm going to do this is to show you the other features as well. We're currently in sandbox. So, what we're going to do is going to go map, rift basin, uh, mp underscore strategy. There we go. So, it's now going to quit this map. It's going to load up a nice fresh map. And it's going to have a HQ uh, when I actually select um, what we're going to be playing with. Just like a normal game. Get to wait for it to load. There we go. So uh, we're gonna we'll do a three way. Why not? And we're gonna go assault and we're gonna go commander. So here we are. We're gonna activate cheats. Boom. And then we're gonna take control of a unit. So uh, we're gonna go back to infantry. We're gonna go soul. We're gonna go infantry. And we're gonna hit F. And now we are free camming inside of a strategy game. Now the AI. It's going to continue doing what the AI does best. Build buildings, send troops around, etc, etc. Uh, we're going to turn off the AI. So we're going to type AI. AI toggle to disable. So they've already been issued a command. And as you can see, they just drive into things and, you know, they, they'll carry on until, you know, they, they've stopped or this happens, for example. Kind of like, it kind of bugs the AI. And they just carry on doing what their last order was, which was to drive forward or move forward and such. If we have a look around the map as well, if you want to speed up the camera, so I'm moving this quick, for example, um, you can use your mouse wheel up and down, um, slow and fast by using shift as well. Uh, looks like we have found at Centauri. And as you can see, they've also done the same thing. They've sent their troops somewhere and uh, they're currently stuck into oblivion. So we're going to bring up the command console again. We're just going to type AI. We're going to allow the AI to continue what they were doing. Like I said, guys, it doesn't stop the commander from using, um, like, building buildings and such. It only stops the AI from the uh, the troop part of things. So as you can see, they've taken control again. They've started to move around once more. Right. Well, this is not what we're here for. Um, we're here to have a look at the menu. So type help. Right. So... We're not going to use destroy just yet. That'll be the last thing we do. Uh, we're not going to use delete either because you can. I, I've done it previously. I've deleted everything. So uh, we're going to do damage. And you can see it's telling me who's building what. So it's telling me that Centauri is building a research facility, building a barracks, building a radar station, human soul, building a research facility. So with cheats on, you can see what the build order is coming in from the um, the AI commanders. And you can see Centauri is currently in the, in the lead versus... Uh, Versus so I'm not sure what the aliens are up to. I haven't seen them actually put out a build order just yet. Uh, no, they haven't. Well, they're building biocache. Okay, so they, they have done one order at least. So, if I type fog. Fog. Fog of war has been disabled. Now, if I go back into taking command of Sol's commander. Look at that. There is no fog of war. However, I don't see Centauri. Centauri is right here. You can hear the harvester here. See? And you can see the uh, the animation of the uh, crystals being destroyed. So, as much as fog of war gets disabled, you cannot see the enemy. So, you know, that's good in that sense. We're going to type fog again. Boom. Fog of war's back. Right, okay. So, I'm actually going to run in Chris Control back to the... Uh, Back to the AI, so he can continue doing what he was doing. So that's turning fog off. Build. <laughs> oh god. So you type build. It's there you go. Unlimited construction enabled. Everything just built automatically. 
Um, this can get a bit dodgy because the AI will literally just, just start spamming stuff and you could just make something absolutely insane. Um, that is the case. So that could actually happen. So just be wary of that. Um, yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to turn that back off. So that's not all disabled. Everything's been built that they just put out anyway. So we're going to go help again so we don't get lost in the, uh, the list. Resources. Right, okay. So type resources. It says your human soul has stored zero resource. And they currently have 850 starting resource. Of a total of 850. So it tells you what, you know, who's got what, for example. But you can actually add resource. So I'm going to try a minute. So resource. Now I haven't actually done this myself. So do bear with me. There you go. So by typing resources space 1000. I have stored 1000 in the resource pool. And they've got a total 650 starting resource. As a total of 1650. So I could be really nasty. And I can go you know what. You can have that much resources. Boom. Now, the Soul AI is going to be absolutely ecstatic. And is just going to start just building. For example, here we go. Here comes a uh, silo by the looks of things. And it's going to start increasing tech very shortly. It's going to start building a factory. There we go. <laughs> Speaking of which, look at this. He's going absolutely nuts. He's just building loads of different things. And it's an easy way you can just you can get things up and running relatively quickly. This added with um with the uh, the instant build command you can turn a game from slow to fast within a second but you you have to be you have to bear in mind as well is you would need to switch team to the opposite team for example now i am centauri to give them the same thing so we want to go resources boom now centauri has a, a lot of resources as well so we want them to build quickly. We're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it for the fun. We're just gonna say build. Look at this. Look how quickly Centauri will kick off. I say this, and they've literally stopped building. Come on. Please build. <laughs> oh, please build. Hello. Oh, okay. They're currently spamming quads. There we go. So look at that. Look how quick this uh, this force is coming out. So quad, 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 <laughs> quad. Okay. So yeah, They're currently spamming quads. Uh, we're gonna turn that off because I don't want them to just steamroll soul. Okay. So yeah. So there's a lot of quads over there. And now I feel bad for soul, as naturally as you do. Um, we are gonna just hand them over. You know, probably all gonna blow up. No, nope, we're all good. So we've we've done a bunch of pods. There we go. So try and make things as even as possible whilst we're whilst we're still doing this. So we're gonna type help again. Help. So we've gone through build. We've gone for resources. FPS. I don't really need to tell you how to do that. You can do that in the options. It just limits how many frames can maybe rendered per second. Zero means no limit. Um, yeah, I'm sitting at 48 frames, 42 frames at the moment. They're currently having five aliens by the looks of things. So. Time scale, um, yeah, so you can set the time scale. It's set between 0 and 1, but I've set it to 9 before on stream. And it's, it's just, it won't work when there's loads of units. Um, it works if there's 0 units. It basically, you can speed up time. Um, but you can also do that using the number pad as well. You can literally make it nighttime and daytime instantly. So, like I said, I can't show you that today, unfortunately. So, health is another thing as well. Um, it does what it does. You can see here. It's showing the HP pools of everything that you can see in front of me. Um, yeah. Uh, another way you can turn this on and off is by typing H. It shows... Okay, so... This is your normal HUD from FreeCam. You hit H once. It brings up all health pools, including bunkers and scouts and, you know, all, all of the factions. Hit H again. And it shows you resource pools. So it's showing like the biotics. It's showing the Bolterium. And where like the most of the Bolterium is in the ground. And such. So that's a pretty cool feature to have in the game. It's good for casting. So for example if I'm casting a competitive game. I'd normally have this on. 
this is so I can see the HP pools of certain units and you can kind of see, you know, when units go to war with each other, what's going down. So, while they're having a fight with big old light quads and such, that, that's what that's used for. So, another feature, let's turn that off. So, we're going to go and, uh, I think I've already done it. Yeah, I have already done it, so hold on, give me a second, guys. So, this is very good for um, capturing screenshots and uh, what I use to get my thumbnails mainly is press G, it removes the HUD. It removes everything from the HUD apart from my FPS counter because that's using NVIDIA. Uh, but I'll turn that off for, um, for you know, main things. Um, but pressing G, now I have no HUD enabled. And I can literally take a look at units and, you know, that sort of thing as well. Capture some good screenshots, like this one, for example. Boom. Screenshot captured. I can go and take control of the unit as well. And I have also can turn my HUD off by pressing G again. There we go. So now I've turned my HUD off. And I'm also driving this quad around. Following my fellow quad brethren into battle as they get stuck on Bolterium Crystals in the center of Rift Basin. So, yeah. And then F again to leave that quad and relinquish it back to the AI. So, yeah, that's that's a good thing to have also. So, we're going to open up the command console once again. Oh, helpo. Okay, so, we uh, show damage debug. So, damage debug. So what this does here, it shows where rounds are going. It shows how much damage is being dealt to certain units. And you can see like the yellow the yellow uh, things being flying around. That's where bullet trage trajectory oh my god, I can say the word trajectories are currently residing. And it's also giving you like debug debug information on when something's open and fire, if a if a round has hit the floor, you know, um, where the round is continuing to go, if something's taken damage. You know, all that sort of thing as well. It's a nice little debug console. It's good for using against um, like, for example, you can see this building taking damage. Um, for example, if we used a... I don't think I can do it right now because of the type of game we're in. But we'll, we'll give it a go. Uh, yeah, because it will just be commanded by the, the AI. It's mainly used for... Um, we're going to use it on the aircraft. Because the aircraft is not controllable by AI, technically. I've just spawned them inside of each other. But that's fine. So, um, we're going to do that. My frames are going to tank here because of the debug menu. So, you can see... Also, if I slow down time, it's showing you where my bullets are going, what I've shot, how much damage I've dealt, if there's penetration, if there's a deflection. See? It's showing you there. All the numbers for it as well. So, it's good for just trying to figure out where the weakest points on a vehicle currently are. Um, how much damage you can do per shot, what's going to be more viable than what unit. And such like that. So it is, it is a good console to be using if you want to just get into more scientific stuff about the game. If you want to try and like figure out, you know, what units can be best against what in a in a bigger like in a swarm form or or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's the debug console. I'm going to turn it off now because it's tanking frames quite a lot. So damage. I think to be honest with you, there, there's a lot going down. So <laughs> I think that's the console command. No, it's not. It's show damage to debug, isn't it? It is, yeah. Oh my god. The bag. Oh, there we go. Right, okay. So hiding damage information. So they'll they'll slowly dissipate now. My frames have improved drastically from that. Okay, so netlist. I mean, that is what it is. It shows you who's connected. Um, you know what's happening. It's showing you what's on the map and such. It's it's just a basic command. You you wouldn't use it for anything. Um, I can't gain access to it, unfortunately, because of... Well, I can. I could use it this way. Open the command console. It's showing me what's on the game and, and all that sort of thing as well. Um, yeah, it just gives you a list of what's on the map and how much HP pools everything's got and, and things like that, really. That's that's what the netlist is. Right, we're going to turn it off. Netlist. There we go. Right, okay. So, we're almost done with the video, actually. Yeah, so, that's all for the console commands. Um... I can quickly spawn in a heavy turret, I suppose, if you want to see what that is. Just to show you how to use the spawn commands, uh, con uh, the command console for spawning once again. So we're going to spawn in, I uh, don't think Fortress City Turret will work, but we'll give it a go. So we're going to go spawn Fortress City underscore turret underscore zero one. Oh, it did spawn it. There we go. So we spawned in a Fortress City Turret. There it is. 
And the Bothelux thing, because I spawned on Satori, he's going to be looking to shoot at something over there. Maybe. Hello? What's he doing? Okay, well, it's just chilling there. It will open fire. If I if I spawn in a soul unit, it will open fire. So I'll do that quickly. Um, there. Actually, he's too busy looking at something else now. Oh, no, he is going to turn and shoot the aircraft. So it will open fire. It's, it's Technically, this isn't in the game yet. You can tell by the way it's um, rendering as I move out and in. But it is a fully functional turret. It will shoot. It won't shoot. <laughs> Uh, it will shoot. It just, yeah, it's just not shooting for some reason. Yeah, okay. So, one last thing before I go, guys, is I'm going to show you the siege map. So, map, uh, we'll do that first so you guys know what you're looking at. So, we're going to hit map. It'll bring up the map menu. It'll bring up what you could pick as well. So, we're going to go for the siege map. So, we're going to go map, siege, map. Just uh, spelled siege wrong, siege map. And then we're going to go MP underscore sandbox. Done. So it quits the game fully outright. And it will take me straight into the siege map. Where you'll see um, what Dram is designed, funny enough. But also, so I can show you the guys of the turrets actually do open fire as well. So we're in the siege map. We're on a citadel of soul. Soul emblem there on the gate. There's cannons. There's a whole city here. Uh, the map isn't complete, by the way, so like things like the bridge is not fully blended in and such. Here's the citadel itself, which is a giant structure. We've got turrets all over the place. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the village. I'm going to go cheats because we've changed map. Spawn menus open. We're going to go Centauri because it technically is a soul fortress. And we're going to go, you know what? I'm going to spawn in a million hover tanks. And now my game is going to struggle, but we're going to see why this would be insane. Slow down time. So you can see the rounds coming in from the turrets that are open and fire. So yeah, guys, that is uh, that is the command menu. <clears throat> you can use it for fun. You can use it just to play around with your mates. Um, you can use it in online games, but I, I'd probably suggest you don't do it unless you ask for permission first, um, because you could end up ruining other people's experience. And you don't really want to. You don't really want to go through cheats like that. And like I said, guys, only the host can activate cheat commands. So you can't be host of a server, and a player comes in and activates cheat commands. It won't work. So yeah, if, if something's fishy going on, then definitely just make sure that the host hasn't activated cheats. Or if he has, he's turned them back off after he's done certain things. Oh, so other players can access the commands after the uh, the console has been activated, like the cheat console's been activated. So just, just bear that in mind, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe. Um, I've got members open as well. You can always join the members for my uh, YouTube channel. Um, totally optional. You don't have to if you don't need to. It's just a way to support the channel. Uh, if you've got any questions guys, let me know in the chat below. Join my Discord if you haven't already. Uh, you can ask me questions there also. I do apologise if this video is a bit all over the place. I try to go through all of the commands as much as I could possible uh, within my own knowledge. Hopefully it helps you out guys with, uh, you know, being able to play around yourself. You know, open up some more opportunities for you guys to do. Um, you can, by the way, drag players into this map. However, be wary. Um, they may have to leave and rejoin. Because they'll probably end up having no lighting on the map if they if they follow you in if you change maps during a mid game but they can rejoin afterwards so it's fine right guys i will see you guys in the next video peace out and see you again <laughs>